The teams have been set for Super Bowl 58, and, well, it's the ultimate nightmare for Raider Nation. That plus a whole lot more comes up on Monday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast for January 29th, 2024. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. The autumn wind is a raider. Pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. And won. And won. And won. And welcome here, Raider Nation, to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast to get the latest edition of the show as soon as it becomes available. As always, if you're checking us out on YouTube, thanks so much. We definitely appreciate that. Uh, Raider Nation has made the show grow in a major way. And like I said, we uh, cannot thank you enough for that. And also, shout out to my man Ari. He does a great job each and every day making sure we're on YouTube and looking good and sounding good. Without him, there is no Locked On Raider podcast on the YouTube channel. So uh, big ups to my my man Ari, you can check him out on Twitter at Ari Produces. You can hit me up as well at your boy Q254. And of course, we got the Lockdown Raider Podcast voicemail line at 707 654 4693. A lot of feedback that we'll get coming up in segment number three of today's show your calls and texts. And it's a lot of it from Super Bowl 58, the teams that are going to be representing, the quarterback conversation that we've had, and a whole lot more that comes up in segment number three. Segment number two, I want you to hear from Courtney Cronin from ESPN. She covers the Bears like a glove. She was on my radio show on Friday, Unnecessary Roughness, Radio Nation Radio 920, and it was great to be able to talk with her because she covers the Bears. And, well, there was about three or four different subjects that I was able to talk to her about, so I just got a couple of the sound bites from it, just about three of them that I'll play for you in segment number two. One is, well, the Bears have the number one overall pick. So, what is it going to take to go get that number one overall pick? What has she been hearing about that uh, draft capital? How valuable it is for the Bears this year around as to what they got last year from the Carolina Panthers when the Panthers went and made the move from nine to one to go get Bryce Young. So uh, you'll hear from her about that. Uh, we'll also talk about Justin Fields and Luke Getze. Luke Getze is a guy that actually interviewed with the Raiders for their offensive coordinator position on Friday. So kind of a three for one with Courtney Cronin. We'll do that coming up in segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Here in segment number one, news and notes, everything collected over the weekend and the offensive coordinator position obviously is still open. Uh, the Raiders are expected to make a decision sooner rather than later. We'll get to that after I tell you about the title sponsor of today's show, which is Prize Picks. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use promo code all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. So off top, uh, as a result of championship weekend, the 49ers and the Chiefs will be playing in Allegiant Stadium February 11th for Super Bowl 58. It's a it's a repeat and it's a, a rematch uh, Super Bowl 54 when it was in Miami. Uh, that was actually, I think, the last game that I went to. Uh, Super Bowl that I went to and saw the the 49ers and the Chiefs and that was the one where Jimmy G overthrew uh, Emmanuel Sanders should have had him on a touchdown it was matter of fact the play was coming right to me and he just overthrew him and well Jimmy G's never been the same and uh, the 49ers lose that one to the Kansas City Chiefs but they will be back at it February 11th in Allegiant Stadium the Chiefs will actually be practicing and meeting and preparing at the Raiders facilities uh, the whole time that they are here in Vegas preparing for Super Bowl uh, and then the 49ers will be practicing and preparing and all that at the UNLV football complex. That's from Paul Gutierrez from ESPN. But as far as the offensive coordinator search goes, multiple interviews have been taking place. Uh, Antonio Pierce has been really busy doing that. I know he was back in the lab uh, doing interviews on Friday as well. Matter of fact, uh, Tom Telesco was a guest on JT The Bricks show on Raider Nation Radio 920. And so I was messing with the Raiders when they called and said, hey, he's going to He's going to call in at noon. I said, all right, great. So AP is going to call in at two. And they said, well, he's doing a lot of offensive coordinator uh, interviews right now. So I don't think he's going to be able to do that. But he will be on the show sooner rather than later. So I'll hold him to it. I'll make sure that he is. But, uh, yeah, so I know that the offensive coordinator interviews have been going on. There was a couple names that I know Raider Nation was interested in. Zach Robinson, the Rams quarterback coach. I talked about him on Friday. Thought that he was going to go and uh, end up being the offensive coordinator with the Falcons under Raheem Morris, who who got that job as the head coach there. Uh, they both come over from the Rams. He was a Rams defensive coordinator. So Zach Robinson, who was the quarterback coach, did in fact take that job as the offensive coordinator. So Robinson's off the board. Dan Pitcher is a guy that is a quarterback coach for the Bengals. He was promoted to the offensive coordinator. So both those names are off the board. But 
Cliff Kingsbury, UFC offensive assistant, he did interview with the Raiders. Luke Getze, as I mentioned before, former Bears offensive coordinator, he interviewed, uh, and I'll say this, and Courtney kind of confirmed it. If he gets the job, there is no chance that the Raiders will bring in Justin Fields. Just go ahead and uh, keep that in your mind. Alex Van Pelt, former Browns offensive coordinator, uh, he was interviewed by the Raiders. Mike Sullivan, Steelers interim offensive coordinator, has been interviewed by the Raiders. Thad Lewis, the quarterback coach there in Tampa Bay, he's been requested. And then Clint Kubiak. This is an interesting one. 49ers passing game specialist was expected to interview with the Raiders if the 49ers had lost uh, to the Lions over the weekend. Well, the 49ers did not lose, so now the Raiders aren't able to interview any or interview him until after the Super Bowl, and I think that that's going to be too long. And according to Ian Rappaport from NFL Network, the Raiders are actually expected to make a decision early this week. So that could come today, maybe come tomorrow, but it's expected to get wrapped up sooner rather than later. So don't expect Clint Kubiak to be part of the mix. Also, I kind of wanted to touch real quick on, and uh, really this could be a conversation that we expand into a, a whole segment, just a couple of key elements that stood out to me from championship weekend that I think the Raiders can kind of take away from. First of all, when it comes to Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, uh, Mahomes is a problem, right? I mean, they went into Baltimore after a week after going into Buffalo and picking up the win over the Bills, and I thought, okay, well, it's the Bills. You know, I figured that bubble was going to burst at some point. Man, the Chiefs made the Ravens look so bad and look so uncomfortable and uh, it was a closer game than it probably should have been. It looked like the Chiefs really should have blown them out. Uh, Lamar Jackson had a bad day. He picked a bad day to have a bad day. Too many mistakes that they made. Zay Flowers made multiple mistakes. Just all kind of things. But, but bottom line is what stood out to me is that Mahomes is going to be a problem. And as long as 15 is on the field, the Chiefs are going to have a chance. And I know that they haven't had a very good season. The regular season wasn't great. But, you know, they went on the road when they had to, and they picked up the Ws. Now they're playing in the Super Bowl. So uh, whatever you do as a defense, you've got to build that defense to really try to compete and slow down the Kansas City Chiefs regardless. And you know what? I think the Raiders have done a good job of that. That's one area that I can say they've done a good job. There's still more elements that need to be added to the mix. But I think the Raiders give the Chiefs a really tough out. Now, I don't think anyone's going to beat the Chiefs consistently right now as long as they have 15 and they got Andy Reid. But uh, I think that the Raiders have a have just as good a shot as anyone else, especially led by that defense. Now, the key is obviously scoring as many points as possible. But as far as the Lions go, I thought offensive coordinator Ben Johnson, who is a favorite to get, uh, you know, multiple uh, head coaching opportunities. But uh, with the Washington Commanders, it looks like that that's where he's probably going to end up getting his job. But I know multiple teams were really interested in him. What I thought was good about what he did, and it was pointed out a couple times during the broadcast, he really built the offense around the personnel that they had. It wasn't like he had just a certain scheme, like, you know, the, the Shanahan scheme or the McVay scheme. It was more like, okay, this is the personnel we have. How can we build this thing up? I could appreciate that, and I think that more teams should do that instead of just sticking to their guns and saying, well, this is my scheme. This is what we got to do. This is how the quarterback's got to play. This is how the running back's got to play. This is the kind of routes we're going to run. Like, you've got to be able to build it around your personnel, so I could appreciate that. Also, you know, as far as, like, the Lions in their run game, uh, the way that they ran against the 49ers, and look, they ultimately lose the game, but the way they were running the ball in the first half, that's what I envision Antonio Pierce wanting. Right, a dominant running game where you really have two running backs that are weapons, David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs, but they're two different guys. Right. I look at Josh Jacobs and I look at Zamir White and I think that they're very similar. But when you look at the Lions, they have almost that uh, you know, that Tyrone Wheatley and, and Charlie Garner style, right? Where one's the the pound it in David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs is just a the ultimate weapon, right? I feel like that that's kind of the the approach that Antonio Pierce wants to see from his team. Now, obviously, we'll learn a lot more when they hire the offensive coordinator and they kind of roll out, you know, what kind of plan they envision to, to have. But I feel like to have that kind of ability to run, and that's what I thought gave the Lions a chance to beat the 49ers is because they could run the ball. They ran for over 140 yards in the first half. Now, they made some mistakes. I think they should have gone for a touchdown the the end of the first half, and then obviously in the second half when he went for multiple fourth downs and didn't get it. And I think that... The one that he didn't go for, he should have gone for, and the ones that he did go for, he probably shouldn't have gone for. But hindsight's always twenty twenty. It's always easy to second guess when it's all said and done. Quarterback ability. You know, I, I had a lot of people hitting me up. One guy in particular was hitting me up throughout the course of the game and was saying, oh, look at Jared Goff. He's a statue quarterback, and he's beating up on, uh, you know, on, on the 49ers, and he's doing this, and he's doing that, and basically saying that you don't need to have a quarterback that's mobile. And my reply was, okay, he is having a really good game. I've acknowledged that. But think how much better he'd be if he was able to use his legs at all. And then the perfect example came later in the game when Brock Purdy did exactly just that. 
Again, you don't. I don't need a runner. Like I think so many people get it confused when I say that I want a quarterback that has uh, mobility, a guy that's able to extend plays, a guy that's able to pick up a first down. Brock Purdy did that multiple times throughout the course of the game, especially close to the end, around four and a half minutes left in the game, picked up a big first down with his legs. And I know that the 49ers went on to you know score again, and it wasn't the ultimate play that salted away, but it was just about the play that salted away. You just, I just feel like you really have got to have that element. And I know there's different elements to it. There's the extreme where you're like Lamar Jackson, where you're going to go for a thousand yards a season. And then there's others that aren't like, no one's going to ever say Brock Purdy is the most athletic dude. But when he needs to get up out of there and get seven or eight yards for a first down, he has the ability. That's okay. That's all I'm asking about. So a lot of people keep getting it confused no matter how many times I explain it, which is insane to me. But I guess it is what it is. It's just, uh, you know, I guess the, the, the mobility word is what gets everyone hung up. Everyone thinks it's a runner. No, I'm not saying that. Just saying a guy that has the ability to pick up a first down, extend a play, roll out even. Purdy did it multiple times on, on Sunday. Rolled out and gave his guys chances to get open. Then he hit them. So that's, that's, again, one of the biggest keys. And look, if you're not going to go in that direction, if you're going to go with like a statue like Jared Goff, and again, that's not a slight to him. That's just reality of who he is. You've got to have a stellar offensive line, and you've got to have a couple standouts like Panay Sewell for the Lions, right? And so he gives them an opportunity, and Panay Sewell is a fun guy to watch, right? I think about, man, that would have been great if the Raiders could have got him, but the Lions picked him number seven overall, uh, what, in 2020? or twenty? Yeah, I think 2020. And uh, that was when Alex Leatherwood got selected, uh, number 17 overall, and we all know how that worked out with, uh, with uh, Leatherwood. It didn't work out. I almost forget his name. It was so bad. Uh, he's, just, he's barely hanging on in the NFL still. That's, that's how bad that pick worked out. You could always use an offensive lineman. But, uh, yeah, I mean, so if you're going to do that, you should build up the offensive line anyway. I think that the Raiders need to continue to build that, uh, you know, and have a monster up there. But, again, man, just the legs that Brock Purdy showed at the end of the game was so critical in the success for the, Raider, or for the 49ers that I just feel like the Raiders, whoever their quarterback is going to be, needs to have that type of ability as well. Again, that's a conversation that, I mean, I have so many notes from the two games that uh, we could really have like multiple segments on. And maybe we'll go back to it at some point, but I wanted to point out a couple things that stood out to me from championship weekend that maybe the Raiders could use in their favor moving forward. Coming up in segment number two, you hear from Courtney Cronin from ESPN. She covers the Chicago Bears like a glove. We'll talk about Luke Getze. We'll talk about Justin Fields. And we'll talk about that number one overall pick. What would it cost? So get it, go get them that, or go get that pick. We'll do that in segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. We'll get right into that after I tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. The easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's you against the numbers. That's it. You're not going up against thousands of players, pros, sharks, none of that. You pick more than or less than two to six player stat projections, and you watch the winnings roll in. You know the NFL is coming to a close. Super Bowl 58 is coming up on uh, February 11th, so you don't have much time to get in on the NFL action. Only got one more game to get in on the NFL action, but they've got NBA action and a whole lot more. Prize Picks even offers a reboot policy. Your entries will stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured for football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half, doesn't come back in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sp- sports platform with injury insurance policy. You can get quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and enormous selection of players and stat types at what make Prize Picks, and that makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. All you got to do right now is check it out at prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use the promo code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Promo code is locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, Raider Nation, there we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. I want you to hear a few sound bites from Courtney Cronin, covers the Bears for ESPN like a glove. She's really good at what she does. I do, I've done many shows with her. Uh, she's fantastic. But I thought it was a really good opportunity to catch up and find out a lot of different information from Courtney. So I had her on my radio show on Friday, Unnecessary Roughness, on Raider Nation Radio 920. And we talked about multiple different subjects. Because right now, I think the Bears are in a great position. I mean, they have the number one overall pick again, thanks to the Carolina Panthers. And if I'm the Bears and I know that I need to build this team up in a major way, I'm definitely trading that pick to the highest bidder. Right. I don't think that they're in a position where they're going to be competing for, you know, a deep playoff run right now. But, man, you want to know the fastest way to get there? Trade that number one overall pick with all the quarterback talent that's in this draft and all these teams that are desperate for the quarterback, including the Raiders, in my opinion. Man, they can get a massive haul, much more than they got 
even a season ago uh, from the Carolina Panthers who traded up from number nine to number one. So a couple different subjects that I talked about with Courtney. I just want you to hear a couple of the sounders that she had to uh, things she had to say about it. And the first one is exactly that talking about the haul that the bears could get for the number one overall pick. Check it out. Last year, they received wide receiver Jay Moore, the 2023 first round pick. That was number nine overall 2023 second round pick number 61 overall 2024 first round pick and 2025 second round pick. With all the quarterback talent at the top of this draft this upcoming year, how much more valuable do you think that number one overall pick is now? I think it's significant. Like, if they were to trade out of that, what we have been hearing is that the haul could be even bigger than what you just mentioned, which is the top 15 wide receiver and DJ Moore and four additional, you know, four draft picks. Um, I would imagine that that could be another player plus, you know, four picks and then maybe like two more, um, maybe even three. I mean, there's there's a lot to like about this quarterback draft class that you didn't have last year. I mean, nobody, I don't think we knew C.J. Stroud was going to develop into this rookie quarterback who got his team into the postseason in year one. And it was a perfect marriage between a first-year play caller, a first-year head coach, and a rookie quarterback, things like that don't happen all that often. So for a draft class now that has Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, Michael Penix Jr., J.J. McCarthy, Bo Nix, like that's six names right there that, (laughs) you know, by early day two, all of them could be off the board. That's a lot different than last year's draft class. So for the Bears, if they decide that Justin's their guy and they're going to move forward with him and a new offensive coordinator in that pairing – Like, you can get another King's Ransom for this. You just got to play it right so you're not tipping your hand, which I think Ryan Poles has been smart in in voicing, at least publicly, that he anticipates taking this thing all the way up till the draft. Like, he's not in any rush because he doesn't need to be because the longer you wait, the more the price is going to go up. If someone's really eyeing trying to get up to number one to go get Caleb Williams or Drake May if it's not the Bears. So there you go right there. Courtney talking about the number one overall pick, talking about how the – the, the haul for that pick could be significantly more than it was last season. And look, GM Ryan Poles of the Bears is going to, you know, he's going to hold out, hold out, hold out, and see who gets as desperate as they need to get uh, to go get that spot, right? That's that's what I would do. If I was him, uh, I would just go ahead and, and roll the dice with Justin Fields one more year and then just build everything around him, right? Everything. Just just use all that that draft capital. And then who knows what you if, – if you can't get the quarterback – play the way you wanted to then you know maybe you could do something else hell maybe you could still get the guy that you want it just depending on who makes those trades and where you're actually you know what the draft capital looks like but man if I'm the Bears that would be my number one intent would to be trading that number one overall pick knowing how many how many uh you know teams really want to get up there to that spot also with Courtney Cronin from my uh, radio show on Friday talking about Justin Fields and if she's seen enough to think that he could be a franchise quarterback for some other team if they do decide to hold on to the pick and go get a Caleb Williams or a Drake May or Jaden Daniels whoever they think could fit in their system is Justin Fields a guy that you've seen develop into he could be a potential franchise quarterback for someone else just needs a change of scenery like it just depends where Q I mean like I've <laughs> Up until the time I saw the Luke Getze report today that he was going to be interviewing with the Raiders, I thought, hey, maybe this is a destination that if they threw a second and a seventh round pick mm-hmm. at the Bears, that you know would make sense for Vegas. But like, I could, can he go somewhere and can he be a franchise guy? Yeah, of course. Second, you know, we've seen quarterbacks throughout you know the last ten years get fresh starts. Look at Jared Goff. Look at like, shoot, even look at Mason Rudolph. Like, go get a fresh start somewhere else, get a second opportunity, and, and if you make the most of it, then you make the most of your opportunity and you can have a new, new lease on your career. But I, I just I, I keep trying to think about where fields can go that makes the most sense. Like, I've heard the insane idea that the Atlanta Falcons are going to give up that eighth overall pick for Justin Fields. I just think that that's too much. I mean, when I wrote a story – with Jeremy Fowler back in December, uh, early, early January is going into week 18. And you're like, you know, we're pulling execs, we're pulling front office people across the NFL. And the consensus was that there was no consensus about the type of haul that they could get for Justin Fields. And whether that's a second round pick, a third round pick, maybe you're packaging a second in like in a fourth, maybe it's second in like a fifth. I mean, there's just, there, there's no real price that like is a unanimous belief um, like on, okay, this guy is worth X, Y, Z. But if he goes to the right spot, 
it has to be with the right. You know, he he came into a pretty bad situation in Chicago, and it never got better. Like, no matter what you think of Justin Fields as a quarterback, he, he was dealt a pretty crappy hand. When he comes in, the staff was on its last leg. Um, they were trying to make something work. They handled it incredibly poorly from the start, which is why they are no longer employed. Um, <laughs> and then I think that you take a look at what happened with Matt Eberflus and Luke Getzey. You know, Luke Getzey was a first-year play caller. Like, I, I love the guy. He's, he was awesome with us. I think he, you know, dealt with his own lumps of being an OC for the first time, but a little different than Coach Aaron Rodgers when you have a, you know, a young quarterback You've never called plays in the NFL level yourself. That marriage was doomed from the start, and it never, it never felt like it synced up where they were both, you know, uh, you know, it's not a symbiotic relationship. So I think that that stuff factors into um, the success of wherever Justin Fields goes. You've got to, you know, you'd like to make sure that he would be in the right spot uh, where an offensive coordinator is going to design a system to his strength. So what Courtney had to say in a very detailed way right there is what bothers me about Justin Fields. Right? It just does not sound like anyone's very convinced that he could be that guy for, for any team, right? You've got to build the, the team around him to be, you know, to, to, to be in the best position. I just don't know if he's going to end up being that guy. Now, I mean, if you give up, a, like she just said, maybe a second and a seventh, maybe it's, that's worth the try, especially because his salary is cheap this year. And, you know, you get the fifth-year option. It's like, what, $20-something million, $22 million uh, if you pick it up. And, uh, you know, then you got to make a decision. So you have a little bit of time where you can figure it out. But it just sounds like from everyone that I've talked to about Justin Fields, like they're just not sure. And if they're not sure about him after this much time in the league, even though he's been in a bad position, like Courtney mentioned, in there in Chicago and didn't have a lot around him, uh, you know, and that, that coaching staff didn't do him any favors. It just feels like he's not going to end up being that guy. And ultimately, that might be why the Bears do exactly opposite of what I said. They might say, hey, yeah, for every reason you just said is the reason why we have to uh, go and get our quarterback at number one instead of being able to trade it. You know, that 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 could be a, a case, a scenario that ends up happening because they just don't see it and don't believe that he could turn in to that guy. So finally, we found out on Friday that Luke Getze, who was the offensive coordinator there in Chicago, was coming to Vegas to to visit with Antonio Pierce and interview for the offensive coordinator position. So I asked Courtney, hey, you know, if if he ends up getting the job with the Raiders as the OC, what should Raider Nation expect to see as far as offensive play calling goes? You know, I think that I, I'm not surprised to see that his name surfaced. Um, I think you got to make sure you trace the dots too, like you know, who's Antonio Pierce's agent. You know, I believe that he's represented by Trace Armstrong. Uh, Luke gets he's a Trace Armstrong guy as well. So mm. those things factor in. Um, but I I think that a fresh start for Getty, like, you know, he was a young coordinator. He was, you know, he's in his, you know, mid thirties. He's had a chance to, you know, take a take a look at this thing in totality, learned what worked with Justin Fields, learned what didn't work. And realized, too, that he wasn't coaching Aaron Rodgers anymore. And I don't think that that's, you know, necessarily a knock on him as a coach. It's just a development that you can ask one quarterback who's going to, you know, first ballot Hall of Famer eventually to do certain things, you know, do things a certain way that you can't ask younger quarterbacks. So the last two years and what they've developed, like there's a lot to be proud of, um, you know, for, for Luke Getze, for Andrew Janoco, for that entire staff that, you know, or the five that got let go. That's that's something I think that they can definitely that he can use in interviews to say, "Hey, I came in thinking this. I came out having learned this over the last two years. If you pair me with the right quarterback, and maybe it's not a rookie, maybe it is somebody with you know where the Raiders are drafting and what their draft capital situation looks like as far as giving up picks for a veteran. Maybe there is a veteran out there. Um, you know, the the market this time around." doesn't feel uh you know it certainly doesn't feel as as open in free agency just because right. there are so many quarterbacks that are sought after in the draft but you know if the Raiders are going to get a project then then maybe they do want to go with somebody I mean obviously Luke Getzey has the play calling experience for the last two years which has to be looked at because he didn't have that the first time around so maybe that way is more you know favorable in his direction but it'll be you know I, I don't think that for I don't think the one experiment in Chicago and the way that the passing game never really married up with the run game. I mean, they were second in rushing. They were 27th in passing. Clearly, there's a disconnect there. That's got to be where he closes the gap at his next shot, whether it's as a coordinator again or, you know, going back into a quarterback's 
coach role before he gets another shot there. So I thought it was interesting that she pointed out immediately that Getsy and, and Antonio Pierce both have the same agent, right? And that's that's the kind of deep diving that, that Courtney does and, and others do that are, are fantastic that, honestly, I didn't even think about. I didn't even think about the connection with the agents there. And so that, that could be something that could be getting Getsy an interview just to get him an interview, or it could be, Hey, you know, this is a really good guy. He's, he's represented by me. I think he would do some really good things and, and maybe his AP trying to get to know him. Maybe there's some real interest. There's a bunch of different ways that can go, but I thought that was interesting that she pointed out that they have the same agent. Um, and then it sounded like that he started to get better as far as the play calling goes. But you know, for the fact that they were trying to make Justin Fields someone that he wasn't, uh, kind of concerns me in itself. So I, I don't know if he's a real legit, like, um, you know, uh, uh, someone who could be a candidate for that offensive coordinator position for the Raiders. But, you know, he did get interviewed. And so there's Courtney just kind of breaking down uh, who he is and, and what he could bring to the table. And, you know, it's different when you're when you're the, you know, when, when a coordinator that's working with Aaron Rodgers as opposed to a, a coordinator who's working with a Justin Fields or Aiden O'Connell or someone else like that, right? Everything is not created equal, so it's a lot different. But I uh, thought those were some pretty good sound bites from the conversation I had with Courtney Cronin from ESPN on Friday on my radio show, talking all things Bears from the number one overall pick to Justin Fields if he's a franchise quarterback and their offensive coordinator. Luke Getze. Coming up in segment number three, your calls and texts draft that Lockdown Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Before we get to that, though, I do want to tell you about one of the great sponsors here on the Lockdown Raiders podcast, and that is BetterHelp. And sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chest. It could be big or small. Certain things can really start to get to you. So it's important to let that all out, especially to someone who's unbiased on your life. So today I kind of want to say, you know, how you could feel about a situation at the job, right? There could be a situation that a potential, you know, maybe a promotion that's coming up that you really want to get. And you're kind of worried that you're not, and you know, you don't know who else is going to be in that promotional position. And you, you know, you, you just don't, don't know what's going on and it's, it's wearing you out or, or maybe you're thinking about making a job change. A lot of times uh, issues that we have at, at the job are really issues that we create in our head because of one reason or the other, right? But sometimes you need to be able to talk it out, but it's hard who you're going to talk it to, right? At, at the job, it's really hard to talk to anyone uh, because you don't know, especially if it's like a promotional type thing is, you know, is that person in, in line for this promotion as well? And so sometimes you just kind of keep those things to yourself and it really starts to eat at you and well, you just need to get it out, get it off your chest, chest where that's where therapy can come in. It could be different for everyone. Uh, if you're thinking of starting therapy, you should give BetterHelp a try. Uh, it's entirely online. It's designed to be f- flexible and suited to your schedule. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Your calls and texts. You have that Rock Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Start things off with Dominique from St. Louis. He's calling to talk about a plan he has for the quarterback position, actually for the quarterback room. Here he is, Dominique in St. Louis. Hey, Q. This is Dominique from St. Louis. Um, first and foremost, appreciate what you do, man. Uh, hopefully I get a chance to meet you one day. Seem like a cool guy, nice and genuine. God, man, I'd like to meet you one day. Hopefully I can do that. But uh, just had a plan here for the quarterback position. Let me know what you think. Um, of course, keep AOC on the roster. He's under contract. Um, secondly, I would do everything possible to trade up for Jaden Daniels. Um, and then third, I would like to bring in a veteran uh, that has starting experience, uh, has had success in the league, still relatively young. I believe he's 30 years old. Um, and that's Marcus Mariota. Um, he signed with the Eagles for one year, $5 million. I think we can get him cheaper than that. Um, he's Like I said, he's starting this league. Uh, he's not a scrub. Um, not saying to you know, bring him in and be the starter, but I would let all three of those guys compete. And um, back in college, I know we're talking about Chris Kingsbury, possibly our OC. Uh, he succeeded at Oregon in kind of a spread uh, air raid offense. Um, just let me know what you think about that. Uh, Marcus Mariota, Jaden Daniels, and ALC, let all three of those guys compete. May the best man win. All right, thanks, Q. Talk to you later. Thank you so much for the call, my man. Appreciate you, and thank you for the kind words. And you already know how I feel about Jaden Daniels. That's quarterback one for me. O'Connell, he's definitely earned the right to be in the quarterback room and at the very least be uh, QB number two, at the very least for Aiden O'Connell. He's done that. Uh, I do agree that the Raiders need to bring in a veteran. I just don't know if Marcus Mariota is actually that guy. Uh, He was in Philly last year. I don't really know how that went. 
I didn't do too much deep diving on him in Philly, but I know in Atlanta in 2022, things didn't go very well. So I'm not too sure where Marcus Mariota is at right now as far as playing, wanting to play, you know, how much love he's got for the game. I'm not too sure. Uh, he's not going to shake up anything. He's not going to ruffle any feathers. You're, you know, spot on when it comes to stuff like that. But I just don't know about Marcus Mariota. But a veteran is definitely needed in that, um, in that, that room. Uh, you know, Brian Hoyer and, and, and Jimmy G, in my opinion, they are not it. Thank you so much for the call, though. I do appreciate you. Up next, got a text from Raider Nation Mason. He says, thank you, Raider Nation Mason out of MT. I just wanted to ask a quick question about the upcoming draft. I personally would not try to trade up to one. I think we can get the number two overall pick for cheaper, and it's a win-win scenario. If Chicago takes Williams, we take Daniels. If, Ch- if Chicago takes Daniels, we take Williams. Hell, if, Ch- if Chicago takes Marvin Harrison, then we take whoever we want. My question, therefore, is what would you give up for the number two overall pick? Who are your untouchables if you have any? For me, the only untouchable is Mad Max Crosby. That man is the heart and soul of the Raiders' defense. would not be the same. Thanks, and go Raiders. That's from Raider Nation Mason. And, yeah, it's funny. I had this conversation on Friday on my radio radio show as well. You know, what would you be willing to give up as far as a player? If you had to involve a player into a trade to get where you need to get to get your quarterback, you know, who would it be? And for me, untouchable Max Crosby, there's no doubt about it. And really, my other untouchable is Devontae Adams, but I could see a scenario where he's not untouchable, if that makes sense. Like, I selfishly don't want to give him up, but I can understand a scenario where you might have to. You know, you saw what the Bears got from the Panthers a season ago, they got DJ Moore. DJ Moore is a top wide receiver, as Courtney pointed out in segment number two, the top 15 wide receiver. Now, Devontae is more than a top 15, but I could see him, you know, them trying to include him in the, in in the mix. I would not want to give him up though. Uh, But yeah, as far as, as far as everyone else goes, I mean, you know, Max Crosby and and Devontae for me are the only two untouchables. Uh, Really, you know, you got guys like, like Hunter Renfro, uh, he could be on the move, but I think the Raiders would have to eat most of the contract uh, to make that doable, you know, make that acceptable for, for uh, any team. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think who else could be out there. Someone suggested on my radio show Malcolm Kuntz is a guy that they would give up, uh, especially since he's all of a sudden built up his stock, and I would hate to see that just because, you know, he, he has built his stock and he's playing really well. Uh, you, you would hate to give him up now. I even had someone suggest Tyree Wilson, and that's intriguing as well. I don't know how I feel about that, uh, but that – you know, that, that could be a scenario, uh, but that's that's really kind of all that I've been thinking of. But as far as untouchables, uh, Max Crosby and Devontae for me. But I know that most people are probably like you where it's just mad Max Crosby as untouchable. But thanks for the text. I appreciate you. Up next, got a call from Michael, who's a longtime Ra- Raider fan. He's calling to talk about the quarterback and the offensive coordinator. Thank you. This is Michael. <clears throat> I've been a Raider fan for 51 plus years and I used to live in Los Angeles and I watched a lot of Raider games at the Coliseum. So my question is, I hope that we, uh, do you think we're going to get a very good coordinator? I'm hearing this guy from USC, uh, the quarterback coach for uh, Caleb Williams. Um, if we move up and get a quarterback, I think we need to go all in. And hopefully Tom and AP and the whole staff can draft and, and get good, solid players to fill the needs so that if we give up so many first-round picks, we won't need it. We'll be able to supplement the draft, um, but we need to get our, our, our QB. So my question is, do you think we're going to get a hire for the OC before the Super Bowl of this year, before the Super Bowl? Anyway, take care. Bye. Michael, thanks for the call. Appreciate you. Yeah, I think the hire will be announced this week. You know, it could be today, it could be tomorrow. Uh, it should be. I think they need to hit the ground running. Uh, they need to attack this offseason and go all in. Tom Telesco is already going through the, the roster. Uh, hopefully Champ Kelly is there to help them go through the roster and determine what they need, what they need to keep, and what they don't need to keep. Uh, they can get their offensive coordinator in there, and him and AP can get to work on what they're trying to do and how they're trying to build this Raiders team and what the identity of this team is going to be. So, yeah, I definitely believe – that uh, they should go ahead and do that. Kingsbury is a guy that is an offensive assistant at USC. Uh, he worked with Caleb Williams, but uh, his, his real work was at Texas Tech when he coached up Patrick Mahomes. And him coaching up Patrick Mahomes was never a problem. Him winning games was a problem. He didn't win a lot of games because he wasn't a very good head coach. But as far as his offensive play calling, oh, he's fantastic. That's why I knew Patrick Mahomes was such a good quarterback when the Chiefs traded up to draft him. I didn't know he was going to be the dude he is today. But I knew he was a really stinking good quarterback based off everything he did 
at Texas Tech. So thanks so much for that uh, that call. I do appreciate you. Up next, got a text from Podog from Hawaii. He says, Aloha Q, longtime listener. Want to say I love your podcast. Definitely my first listen daily. Always appreciate your knowledge and how you keep Raider Nation up to date on all things Raiders. You were talking about that game back in 2014 against the Broncos. I definitely remember that game. I'm pretty sure that was Darren McFadden uh, was the running back, and I would use that same play on Madden and bust off long runs. Anyway, keep up the good work. Raiders it's from Podog representing Maui, Hawaii. Shout out to Podog. Shout out to Hawaii. And shout out to Maui. Love that place as well. And yeah, I don't think that was the, the game. I don't think McFadden, I know the McFadden game you're talking about against Denver. That was in Denver. That was the game where he, Darren ran for like 250 yards. I mean, he was just a monster. They put up uh, the most points that they had put up until the last time uh, that they played the the Chargers uh, at Allegiant Stadium when they put up 63 points. But yeah, that that wasn't, that wasn't that game. I think the 2014 game, I want to say that was Latavius Murray was the running back in that game, I think. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, and I thought that that was the first game that uh, the Raiders won that season. That was uh, against, and that was like in week 10 against Kansas City. And I want to say it was raining at the Coliseum. That's the game I think that, that I'm talking about. But you know how it goes, man. All these games start to, <laughs> to run into each other and you start mixing up, you know, one player from this game, put them in another game. And Hell, I might have a couple games all confused, but uh, thanks so much for the text, my man. I definitely appreciate you. Uh, got time for one more call. How about Darren in the 203? He's calling to talk about the quarterback position and what he thinks the Raiders might think about doing moving forward and in the draft. Here he is, Darren in the 203. Hey, Q, it's Darren calling from the 203. It's funny, on the Tuesday show, I heard you say my name in the 203. I got all excited. And then, like, a few hours later, however long later, I see the Tom Telesco news, and I was like, well, there goes that phone call. Let's go fuck with Ed Dodds and that. Um, but I'd call and talk about uh, some draft position stuff, some quarterback stuff. Um, you know, I- I've always kind of been a believer in, like you've been saying this off season so far, like go get your guy, right? But in a class like this where you're going to have to give up such substantial capital, right, you're looking at three first-round picks plus, That that's a lot, you know. You, you could look at the 49ers with the Trey Lance trade and say, okay, well, you know, it doesn't matter that much, but – Frankly, the 49ers have been much better ran, much more well ran than we have over the last decade, two decades, as much as that hurts to say it. You know, I, I, I don't want to see them playing for Lombardi at our home stadium. That's a different, different, uh, different story. But, um, yeah, I think that, you know, we could stay put at 13, right, and get ourselves uh, a good, you know, offensive tackle to go on the other side of Colton, or a nice a corner, you know, I think it's fun if we got the Kool-Aid uh, kid, that, that'd be fun. Um, but, like, a good corner to, to pair up with Hobbs and, uh, and Jones and then make a move back up into the 20s, early 20s, and maybe snag a Bo Nix or a Michael Penix because I, I feel like they're going to get the, uh, the Will Levis treatment. You know, where everyone's expecting them to go really high and then they're going to start falling, falling, falling for one reason or another. You know, Penix, I, I agree. I'm scared about the injuries, man. That That is terrifying, but scared money don't make money. So, uh, you know, I think we got to do what we got to do, and I agree we got to get our guy. It's just can we have more than one guy that we determine is our guy, you know? I think almost every team, with the exception of, like, Buffalo and uh, Baltimore and uh, KC, well, look at Caleb Williams as, yeah, that's our guy, you know. So can we have multiple our guys? Um, and what would that look like? How could we get that without selling our future? You know, I don't I don't agree with selling, like, Jacoby and Hunter. I, I could see moving one of them. But I think part of why the offense is so primed to have success with a good OC and a good quarterback is because of all the weapons. So I think once you start stripping the weapons away to get the quarterback in, it's really going to hinder what the offense could be. Uh, otherwise, man... Great job. You know, I, lo- I love tuning in to the show every day. Love what you do. Appreciate what you do. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, go Raiders. I mean, that's what it's all about. You know, a lot of people are bugging out about the Tom Telesco hire. But we don't know what we don't know. We won't know until we know it. So, uh, Raiders. Darren, thanks for the call, my man. I appreciate you. And, yeah, you could definitely have more than one guy, right? I, I would say that you should have at least, the, you know, like top three guys, right? Um, you know, you can go like Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Michael Penix, uh, Bo Nix. Uh, or, or whatever you choose, whatever you choose your order to be. But like for me, uh, I, I would say get a guy that's probably not really a realistic option. Another guy who, you know, is more realistic and maybe a guy that's uh, in case of emergency, right? Like, okay, this guy is still a good quarterback and we'll draft him if 
we don't have any other guys that are on our board, right? I mean, they'll, they'll have a board and they'll have like a top 10 of everybody. But, you know, I mean, obviously Caleb Williams is the guy that everyone's talking about. For me, Jaden Daniels is number one because of the relationship that he has with Antonio Pierce already. I think that that, that means something. I really do. I think that you've seen uh, how Jack Jones plays uh, with AP. I just think that AP has that relationship uh, and, and has that ability to get the most out of guys. So I think that Jane Daniels, who's already said that he's wa- he wants to play for AP, uh, would love to play for the Raiders. I think that that would be a big deal. Uh, but you got those guys, Caleb Williams, Jane Daniels, Michael Penix. I like him a lot. If the Raiders stay at 13, he might be there, you know, because of the medicals. But you got to check out the medicals. Bo Nix is a guy that I think has ability. I think the last two years at Oregon, he really did some good things. Uh, you know, I think he really improved his stock. So there's, there's, you know, there's some options there. There's plenty of options for a quarterback. The Raiders just have to decide what they want to do and, and, and what their quarterback looks like, right? What do they feel like their ideal quarterback looks like? Once they're able to decide that factor, then they can go around building that, uh, that room up. So thanks so much for the call. I do appreciate you. That's all I got time for on today's show. Still got a text from Tori in the 605. Got some more calls as well that we'll get to on tomorrow's show. And maybe we'll be talking about the new offensive coordinator for the Raiders. Maybe it'll get announced today. Uh, if not, well, that's okay. We'll still have more news and notes of the day as we always do. And we'll have plenty of conversation as well around the silver and black. So until tomorrow, Raider Nation, take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Love on your family. Most importantly, as always, just win, baby.